we've now come out to Hawkachina, the main attraction here. It is the little desert oasis in Ica, the much bigger town. So this little desert oasis is actually pretty small. It's actually smaller than I thought it was gonna be. It's just like these couple of shops and restaurants around this little thing of water, a little oasis, I guess you could call it. But we've come out here so that we can uh, go grab some dune buggies, try some sandboarding, go out into the desert for sunset. We're gonna do that after we get some food. It's already been an action-packed day, but uh, this day is gonna keep going on. So now time to try some traditional Peruvian food. Oh, that's it. Oh, look at those bananas. This looks good. All right, guys, I got a dish called pollo a la pobre, which is chicken a la pobre. <laughs> I don't know, I have to translate that. But we have chicken here, we have a egg, and we also have banana on the side, fried banana with some papas fritas, some french fries, and some rice. This is a pretty common meal over here. Uh, there's less less fish, I, I would say, uh, I've seen on the menu than back in Lima. Uh, so over here, I've seen a lot more chicken. I'm gonna try this out. Oh, this just looks so good. The egg and the, the flavoring of this chicken is incredible. It's like a like a lemon spice chicken. Oh, I must have some of this banana here. Fried banana on the side. Mm. It's almost like it's caramelized. It's so it's so sweet. It's like it has like brown sugar on it, maybe. Probably doesn't, but that's what it tastes like. It's so so sweet. So we just finished lunch. Probably wasn't a good idea before walking up these dunes, but we're about to get a dune buggy now and head out for sunset. So we're gonna be riding in this green monster right here, which I've nicknamed the Hulk. And uh, it's funny because it doesn't have like a, a top to like cover this engine. It's all just kind of like loose wires. And that's just kind of how it goes here in Peru. At least that's how it goes here in Huacachina. You can see there's a ton of other dune buggies here now. The uh, dune buggy tourism has picked up like crazy. Uh, or not, because they're all sitting here. <laughs> but, but at least there's options available. And so I'm pretty excited that we are able to go on this alone. There's other people going uh, kind of in like big groups. And we asked Aldo if we could go super far out away from other tourists. And he's like, yeah, that's dope, let's do it. So we're doing it. Michael's setting up the... Ready to go. a quick little stop to take a picture but that was insane we, we had to be going like 70 80 miles an hour over these dunes it was some intense driving I feel like I'm in Mad Max right now and if you hear these engines roaring over here it literally feels like we're in Mad Max because everyone is out here racing and like driving over these dunes like crazy and I feel like I, I I'm like in the movie right now look at this Good morning, you guys. This morning, we are starting off the day at the bus station. We just came from the bus yesterday, but actually today, 
We're doing a quick little one hour bus up to a place called Paracas, which is where we're gonna be doing a boat tour this morning. We're gonna be doing a two hour boat tour. It's kind of like the Galapagos. You get to go around and see all these, like all these sea animals. It's gonna be pretty cool, but we have to take a bus there. A lot of buses in this area, but they're very efficient and they're very cheap. So it's pretty great uh, that we can do that pretty easily. So we've made it to Paracas a couple hours later. There's some bus delays, but we've made it here. We're doing this 10 a.m. boat ride where we're going around the Balestas Islands, which is off the coast of, of Paracas. And um, I'm super excited to get out there because we haven't seen any of like the coastline yet, really. We've been on the water, but we haven't even like been on the water. It's not necessarily the uh, high season right now, which is why we wanted to come here during this time of year. Uh, but you can tell there's construction going on. They're pretty much getting it ready for the high season which comes in a couple months. All right, so in about five minutes we're gonna arrive at the first spot, which is one of these places where there's these, all these lines built into the side of the mountain. It's one of those places kind of like where around the world these crop circles show up. It's like almost like an alien kind of thing. But it's this unexplained, uh, strange formation in the side of the mountain. And from there, we're gonna then go see all the cool animals. I'll let the video do the talking. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the strangest looking cone I've ever seen, but it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a lot hotter here than I thought it was going to be. I really should have packed some shorts. New, new, uh, new lesson, always pack at least one pair of shorts. <laughs> Just in case it turns out to be extra hot, because I got plenty of snow gear in my bag. I have no shorts. Still no sign of this bus terminal. Been walking out in the middle of nowhere forever. My ice cream cone melted. <laughs> I have to eat Michael soon to stay alive. Come back now after a wild ride, and I actually got a Peruvian drink here. Every time I've gone to a restaurant here so far, they've offered me to uh, have a pisco sour. And what it is, it's essentially, it's like a distilled wine. It's from grapes from their uh, wine region, and they're all super proud of it. And essentially, it's a, uh, it's, it's a spirit, not a, not like a wine. I like how they have this little pirate ship uh, steering wheel here. So I'm gonna try it out and uh, see because everyone's been asking me to try it. It's like a very smooth brandy. That is like super smooth. The, I thought the top was like foam. This is actually egg whites that they mix in here and then there's sugar. So that's why it's like such a smooth and like almost like it, I don't know, it goes so well. It doesn't taste like it's like a, you know, a high alcohol content like you might think a brandy would be. So this really goes down smooth. And I would have never thought to mix egg whites into a drink, but it works really well. All right, guys, that is the video. I'm gonna enjoy this dinner and this Pisco Sour. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and you're gonna wanna stick around till after the credits, because we have quite the funny blooper that's going in after the end cards. And uh, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to help support us and keep us on the road, you can check out the Patreon, which I'll have linked down below as well. But that's it for today, Rogue Nation. Until next time, explore the world. Board, my sandboard all set, we're all uh, greased up. I'm about to try sandboarding for the first time. I've never actually done it with a real board like this. <laughs> Back in Namibia a couple months ago, he gave me just a, essentially a, a two by four and we greased it up and we went down on our stomachs. This time, I'm actually gonna try standing up. Uh, I, I am a snowboarder, but I haven't done it in years. So I'm sure this is a little bit different. We'll see if I fall face first. <laughs> 